time for another update on my 3D printed Polish Enigma machine. Um, progress has been slow of course, but uh, I am getting there slowly. One of the main things I've done recently is I finally sourced some aluminium. So the whole machine is now actually bolted down to a, an aluminium base plate. Um, that makes it a lot more rigid and uh, it's actually working a lot better now because it's not all flopping around. Um, the other thing I've done is I reprinted the, the top cover here, um, which covers up the mechanism. Now, this actually gave me quite a bit of trouble trying to print this piece. It's quite a large, flat piece, as you can see. And I've always had difficulty printing pieces like that because you end up with the, with the pieces lifting or basically just going wrong. Um, I think one of my other problems is this particular filament I've got doesn't seem as good as the, the last batch I got, and I've been having trouble with it. Um, but this was one of the one of the ones that went wrong. Um, I have found to prevent warping, it helps to to print it with a brim, which is what this is. It's a, a thin extra layer around the outside of the part you're trying to print. But you can see on this one how it it started going wrong and caused that sort of bird's nesting effect. Um, I think what happens is that the piece warps and you end up with the corners lifting and that causes all sorts of issues. Here's another one where it, where it went wrong. Um, the way I've found to prevent this is one, you have to have the glass very, very clean. So start off with very clean glass and use quite a bit of the glue stick to hold it down. Uh, that generally worked. The, the previous cover I had, uh, this, this was my, my first attempt, and this one wasn't actually too bad, except for the fact that at one point it, um, the extruder dropped a huge blob of plastic on it. Now, I was lucky that I happened to see that, and I was able to pause the print and fix it, but in doing so, I actually shifted this on the glass, and so the, the last few layers are actually printed kind of offset. You can't really see in this, but um, that print didn't come out perfect. That was, that was the, the cover I was using. Um, but then I, I finally managed to print the proper one. Um, and what I found really helped in the end was to print the first layers at a very, very slow speed. So I think I put the speed down to about 20% of normal just to do the first layer. And that, that takes hours because it's very slow. But I found that prevented all the warping, and I think it's because it's printing so slowly, it gives everything a chance to, to cool and settle down um, before the, the next layers go on top of that. And that seems to prevent it from lifting. So in the end, I managed to, to print that, and it came out okay. Um, these are little covers I printed just to block the, the holes because of the way this all fits together. So cover fits on like that. Um, I still haven't made the the rest of the keys, the rest of the shafts. Uh, it's a job I'm not looking forward to, so I've been putting it off. But um, I have been thinking about how to do the wiring for this thing. So if you're a member, I've got these little copper rivets, which are going to make one side of the contacts. And I've been redesigning and reprinting my parts to allow these little rivets to fit into there. Now, this actually caused me a bit of a problem. So the problem I had is on the rotors. So if you imagine the little springy pins come through from this side, and then what I need to do is assemble everything with the ring in place, and then it was going to have the, um, the top cover would fit on there. But of course, the problem is this top cover. This is this is actually from the entry wheel. That's not the correct piece. But the the, the top cover is more like that. The inner part fits inside the ring, and then there's an outer part that actually holds the the ring in place. Now, of course, the problem I was going to have is there's no way for me to assemble that and solder the wires. So I've had to redesign all this. And what I've come up with is. 
fairly convoluted, but it should work. So, one of the other things I've done is I'm a bit worried about these, these little pins, the little springy pogo pins, which are going to be pressed through here. Um, they need to go all the way through. And those will be the springy contacts. Now, there isn't really anything to, to hold these in. I was going to glue them, but I'm, I don't really want to do that. So what I've come up with is an extra piece that fits in the middle of the rotor, which is this piece here. Um, this has little hollows that the end of the pin fits into. And the way this will work is it's just a press fit onto the rotor like that. And now when the pins are pressed through, it gives them something to push against. I'll, I'll probably still use a little drop of glue on each one so they can't slide back out. But that means that the pin now can't slide further that way. Um, it, it's held by this. There's a second piece, which is this ring that fits on the top. And then the cover will hold everything in. Uh, the little gaps there are so I can run the wires. Because what I'm actually going to have to do is poke all the pins through. So you have to imagine the pin will be sticking out through there. And then solder carefully onto the side of each pin bring the wires out and then organize putting them through. So what I'm going to do is um, this is this is one of the new cover pieces which will have these little copper rivets going through them. I'm not sure I can basically like that to make one side of the contacts. Now this piece is going to be screwed onto there so that I can actually make all the little solder connections. It's going to be very, very fiddly. Um, I'm not even entirely certain I'm going to be able to do it, to tell the truth, but basically I'm going to have to get the soldering iron into there and then get the wires in the correct position uh, because you, you not only have to get the pins cross-wired correctly, you have to get them in the right orientation so that when this is in the A position, the correct letters are at the top. So it's going to be very fiddly, but the idea is basically I can assemble this as a unit. And then once that's assembled, the ring will actually fit on over the top. And then I put the top cover on. Otherwise, there's just no way for me to assemble it. So that's basically what I'm, I'm doing at the moment. I'm redesigning it and printing those sort of parts there. Um, the other thing I've done is... Basically, it'll be a similar thing for the reflector. So this is the reflector there. And what I've done is I've raised the base of that up so that when you've got the little cover and the little pogo pins fit through it, uh, they don't actually go all the way through yet because I need to drill out the, the holes. Um, but when this cover goes on, the pins will push against that flat and they, they won't be able to fall any further in. So I'm actually going to reprint one of these with little depressions where the ends of the pins fit in, just like that spacer on the, the rotor. Um, the other thing I've done is created little pockets here. So I don't know if you can see it, but the head of the pin is quite, quite a bit fatter than the, the body. And so these little pockets will be for that head to, to slide into. So I'm doing that on the reflector and also on each of the rotors. Um, they'll have those same sort of pockets. It just means I have to reprint a whole bunch of parts that I've already printed. But I'm going to do one first and see if I can even actually wire the thing up and we'll go from there. <laughs> 